Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Morgan Price and today we are back in Stationeers. So today we are going to go over shoots. Um, I'm going to teach you a nice little setup, uh, especially for a starter setup, a nice little setup to automate your uh, arc furnace and a reasonably inexpensive recycling system. So I want to say thank you to Mr. Hacky Sack from Reddit for bringing this to my attention. I actually didn't think about a shoots tutorial. So thank you very much. And here you go. Let's get into it. So the things to think about. Things can occasionally get stuck. So um, if you try to cram too much through the system at once, things will get stuck. Uh, you're not processing fast enough, things like that. Um, and you can lose materials because they will actually clip out. Um, so just, just be aware of what's going on there. They have finite capacity. I believe they can only hold one stack of whatever material they are moving at a time. Not the entire thing, but per segment. So it's one segment holds one stack of whatever item. So if you're running iron ingots through and you can hold... You can make a stack of 500 grams, or I think it's like 200, 250, something like that. It's not a lot. Um, it will only hold one stack of that. They are useful for long distances. They are fast, and they can cover long distances pretty well. Um, I know a guy who has uh, um, a rocket pad that is about... 50 meters away that he uses uh, shoots in order to move things around but there is transit time so it's it's not going to be an instant boom I have uh, my item I just sent through on the other end but it is faster than a player can run typically so they're reasonably cheap a shoot costs 3 grams of iron so um they're a very easy inventory management item to get. So, And they are printed on an auto lathe. You don't need any specialty equipment. You can make these things first day if you really wanted to. Um, junctions only have two inlets. I'll show you on this setup back here. Um, but you only have two inlets, one outlet. So plan accordingly. So you can place things into bins, inlets, you have to throw things into. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, and only the bin requires power. Others, just data connections. So I'll also show you that right now. Now, I've got, some, I've got this recycling system here. It is... Uh, I actually use these in my base. I will have... A room centrally located to what I'm working with that I can have a bin that goes into the trash system so hmm let's see um you know what Let, let's toss one of these auto lathes in there boom goes into there recycles it up goes into the centrifuge it's gonna do its thing kicks out the copper, kicks out the gold, kicks out the iron. You only get a, a certain amount with with uh, the, the centrifuge and the recycling. I believe it's like 50% of the initial um, cost. So what it costs to build it, you'll only get about 50% back. Now, we were talking about how bins and inlets, you can set things into a bin, you can't do so with inlets. With inlets, you have to drop it on there, and yeah. I'm not sure why you would make a machine like this. I did it for demonstration purposes, but really, this is kind of pointless. Uh, and catch. Uh, got it. So let's toss this in there. Boom. All right, cool. Now, that being said... 
there are a few simple ways you can set, set up things. So if you notice, I have stackers here. For those of you who haven't really um, played the game, stackers are a way to um, stack items. Uh, so take, for instance, I have a mod in that lets me print iron ore. So I can turn this guy on and he'll start printing iron ore and let's hover up over here. And as you can see, it comes out and goes immediately into the stacker. Now, I can mess things up if I were to, let's grab a, let's grab a chunk of gold ore. I'm gonna grab this chunk of gold ore here and there it is. So say something falls into this here, like a chunk of gold ore. Uh, excuse me, you're not... Alright, fine. See, now I just messed up the entire stacking process, and... Uh... I have rogue iron ore now. I can... I can fix that up easily enough by setting it up that way, and it'll just catch what I got. Let's turn off the jetpack, toss this guy into the, the um, pen with the rest of them. Um, to protect against that, you want to use a chute. See, no matter what happens now with this one, I can dump entire inventories of stuff in between the machines. It'll never go into that chute now, or into this stacker. So this stacker is now protected. That's something you actually want to think about when you are setting up your machiner machinery. Now, let's put this guy away. Go doop. Um, when placing shoots, you have several options. Let's grab a stack here. Um, you have uh, windowed, you have straight, you have corner, then you have a junction, bin, outlet, inlet. Now, Straight shoots like this um, cost one kit. Corner shoots cost one kit. A windowed shoot, um, an inlet, an outlet, and a bin, and junction all cost two kits. So we're going to go with a straight one there and... Now we can print this up and it'll send over there. You'll notice when it gets something because the little mail handle will go down. And turn that off because we don't need a ton of iron right now. Um, so plan accordingly when you are doing things. Um, windowed shoots, they do allow you to see what's in the system or what's going through the system. But they are going to potentially murder your frame rate. So when you uh, when you use um, windowed shoots, it has to render what's in there. Now it does keep track of what's in there, and occasionally you will see um, like a corner of something or whatnot going through the shoot. But for the most part, doesn't render it unless there's a window in it. And like when we had the gold um, running through it. The animation is not particularly sp smooth. It stutters a bit. So it just... I believe it's just a technical limitation. It's not actually a problem with the game. Um, it renders it one at a time inside the pipe. So just something to be aware of. Now, we were talking about an easy uh, logic um, and shoot setup for an arc furnace. Now, as you see, I have my arc furnace sealed in this little chamber, and he is not somewhere where I can press the button to start him. So what I have done, let's set this down here, I have taken a slot reader and set it for the arc furnace. Let's press 6 grab the screwdriver, I've taken a slot reader, set it for the arc furnace, um, I set it for the import slot, and it's just occupied. If something is in the import slot, it will send a message to this logic writer, 
which only has one input, so it's the slot reader, and it goes out to the arc furnace, and it says activate. So it will press the button for me as long as there is something in the import slot. So we put this in, flush them down. <coughs> Pardon me. He kicks on. And he's going to take the amount of time that he does, and it will uh, send back out the uh, amount of uh, material we just sent in. So, yeah, that's an easy-to-automate arc furnace. Oh, and just as an aside, you can run cables, much like through with pipes, you can run cables through... Um, shoots just as long as the cable ends are on either side of the chute. So it's not 100% like pipes, but it's very similar. With that, let's move on to the recycling system. So you saw a little bit of this earlier. Um, you can set up logic to where once something is in here, it'll turn on the entire system, run it through, and uh, recycle things, but let's grab F1 real quick and type in recycler. There we go, the recycler. So, um, this uses a 100 watts of power, so it's not always good to leave it on all the time, but if you don't have to worry too much about your um, power usage, you're fine. So, Plants and organic matter pass through will create biomass, which... What? Oh, uh, well, I'm not sure on that, but... So, of the things you can recycle, let's do that. Sorry, I always hit F1 for some reason. Of the things you recycle, you will get back approximately 50% of your input cost, unless you do something like, say, recycle, um, like this iron ingot. If you recycle ingots and the like, as far as I know, currently, you will get 100% back. So we should get um, 10... 10 stacks of iron out of that once it processes up because that was 500 grams of iron so we should get 10 full stacks of iron ore out of that yep oh wow I didn't realize it... oh okay the gold is in there because I recycled something like a battery earlier, and it didn't uh, it didn't do everything it was supposed to do. So, um, because there wasn't enough to make another one unit, because the units are in grams, uh, it's holding on to that. So it's done. Sending that out, it's going to, yep, because there's no atmosphere, it wants to stack up and do weird things, so, all right, now, it's done its thing, let's, excuse me, let's grab, put this guy away, ugh. We don't need to keep that going. So, as I was showing you earlier, junctions. You only have two inlets. So, um, you can chain as many as you need to together in order to uh, get what you want. But, again, um, you don't want to overcrowd your pipes. Now, I'm going to... Um... Okay, fine. You don't want to, you don't want to work with me. Fine. Um, I had something set up to where it should clear. No, I don't want that in there. 
iron. There. Now this will send, see this is three, as we had over here, you just have one. This will be three times faster with three different uh, machines kicking out your products and then just centralizing them into one stacker. So given the right amount of time, that will fill up relatively quickly. Um, but turn this off since I'm not actually trying to produce very much yeah that's how junctions work this guy should have turned uh, maybe this is just because this is an on off switch um, oh I think I may know what I need to do here so rather than on activate Oh my goodness. <laughs> I fixed it and I did it on camera. Okay, so I messed up in my initial uh, settings and yeah, it is um, linked to the batch writer. And so all you do is, um, and I had it set to where it would turn it on and off on accident. You want it on activate and it will uh, execute the function that the batch writer is set up to do. So the batch writer is set up to write to all the auto lathes and it's set up to activate. Let us hop over here. Excuse me, I'm not trying to fly off into the sunset. Let's go back. Um, anyway, it's set up to activate all of these guys. So I've now just set up a rocker switch that turns on and off all three of these. Nice. Oh. Oh, hi. Yeah. Throw that into the corral with the others. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Um, if you like this, click that thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And please consider subscribing. And thanks again to Mr. Hacky Sack. I appreciate the suggestion and... There you go. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.